I have this ability to make people feel comfortable. And that safe, that safe space makes it possible to go to the next step with him. Um, That's huge. Yeah, it is huge. It's really big. I continually get that feedback from people about the process of working with me as a photographer. If I were photographing uh, a comedian, female, um, I might want to do something like that on the stage with like stage lighting, um, really animated, um, as opposed to like a politician or a, um, a, another, like a male actor. Say. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I really think that who they're, their persona in the world impacts my story about them, and I try to, to marry that. Hey, quick question before we get started. Would you like to win a free piece of clothing from Snowman Films and a 30-minute chat about your creative journey with me? I know that I would love to connect with you, and I know that I would have loved to talk with somebody who had experienced a similar path when I was getting started. So let's make it happen. Here's what you need to do. Subscribe to the Conversations with Creators podcast, rate and review and share it in just five easy steps. First, write a review on your preferred podcasting platform and rate it. Five stars for good karma. Then, screenshot your review and share it on social media, tagging Snowman Films. Each month, I'll select one random winner to receive a free piece of clothing from our store and a 30-minute virtual coaching call with me. Again, subscribe, write a review, rate the show, screenshot that review, share it on social media tagging Snowman Films, and get entered into a drawing for that one-on-one -on -one virtual session with me and some free swag. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave me a review. I really appreciate you, and I'm excited to see you in our one-on-one -on -one virtual call soon. Now, let's dive into today's episode. So the big question is this, how are creators like us who aren't built for the nine to five, for the people who put their passion for them being comfortable. How do we turn that passion into a living that pays the bills and a life that we love? That is the question. This podcast will give you the answers. My name is Noah Mittman and welcome to Conversations with Creators. Welcome back to Conversations with Creators. I am Noah Mittman, your host, and with me today is world famous, amazing, talented EJ Carr. Thank you for being on the show, EJ. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> yeah man I, uh it's so we connected i we were talking a little bit earlier uh we may keep some of it in but about sh we connected through shine music festival and the amazing nigel dick and uh i think it was before that i think it was at oh honey you're right you're right we did was it the music video yeah and i might have and there might have been and uh, there might have been something even before that but i know oh, yeah. that I know my memory is shit. So if if it is, please tell me. I remember you humping gear through the countryside up in the mountains. So, yeah, that was the music video. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, that music video went viral. That was crazy. I don't uh, really. Think. It's really called. Uh, I'm trying to think of the artist. It's called "I Pray to God," and it was. Oh, they honey. Link it in the show. Yeah, yeah, oh honey, yeah, 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 totally. Well, say that's it again. Right. Oh honey, oh honey, uh -huh. was it? Okay? Yeah. I think so. She's Hawaiian. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. But like, what what a what a job on that one. That was. Uh... <laughs> I remember. I remember Nigel when we were, you know, in the middle of the of the field, you know, humping, you know, carrot trekking, lighting gear past cow poop. He's like, this is this is the the glamorous lifestyle that you can expect from from working with me. And I was like, oh, I just love it. This is the glory of the industry, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty, I was pretty happy with that. Cause I, uh, on, on that shoot, I pulled focus on a shot where she was walking towards camera. So we went from like 30 feet away from camera to past camera and I stayed sharp the whole time. I was pretty happy with that. And it was like, it wasn't on a monitor. It was just on the side of the lens, you know, yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> But yeah, man, I, you have, you have quite the resume, uh, for, for, and, and you're, you're big. I mean, it seems like your passion is portrait photography. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think that, um, there was a trend. I think I was a transformation at some point in my career back then, back like a while ago. I, I initially was, um, I just wanted to take pictures when I first started. That's all yeah. I wanted to do. 
Um, and it was the first thing in my life that I ever felt at the, at the time, I felt like this was the first thing that ever gave me so much positive feedback that is sort of was like, okay, there's a fork in the road and I'm going to go that way. Um, and that was very early on in my career. I was young. That was way before, um, that was way before I ever even started to work professionally. Mm. Um, and, um, so yeah, it just, it just became clear to me that I had a, I had an eye and I had a sensibility about composition and color and sensitivity towards emotion. Um, and that was pretty much the foundation that, that gave me the confidence to start moving that direction. Um, after a lot of time in school, uh, between art school and college and then uh, photography school in California, my what became clear to me is that I wanted to go into fashion. And quite honestly, I wanted to go into fashion one because it still had an art. There was still a, there was still a facet to fashion and still to this day is true. That is art. Um, and yeah. I could meet a lot of really pretty girls. So <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you break it down, it all comes back to the same thing. <laughs> um, so listen, listen, I, there's no shame in that. That was just for one. <laughs> Uh, one of, I I know this for a fact. One of the deciding factors in my wife falling in love with me was seeing one of my passion project videos. It was it was parkour back in the day, but it was like she could tell that I was passionate about something, and that was that was uh, great for her. So you know, yeah. it's it's uh, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong. Is that healthy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, um, so uh. I went to New York early on after I got out of school in the late seventies and I started pursuing my, my career in fashion. That was my door. I was going to become the next Richard Avedon. That's, mm. that's, you know, that's sort of an, that was my immature motivation. Like it's like, I was going to become somebody else. Um, right. I, that's how, that's how we always start is you have the inspiration. You're like, I'm going to have this. And then you find your own voice. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to, I was going to like knock him off the pedestal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Clearly, that never happened. <laughs> um, and it, it took a long time for me to realize that the only thing I can do is be me. Yep. Um, and I think that that, well, I don't think, that was what actually opened the, the gate for me to start pursuing portrait photography alongside the fashion career that I had. Um, and that was in the early 90s. And in the early, well, early to mid 90s. And that was at a time when like celebrity photographers became there were everybody wanted to be her Brits and Timothy White and uh, Mark Seliger and uh, everybody is uh, those were the guys that were the leaders in that world. So that was my next inspiration. I was like, okay, if those guys can do it, I can do it. Um, so along with my fashion business, I started pursuing portrait photography directly and specifically towards the editorial market in a major major market. So my intent was to like, you know, give my work in all the major magazines in the portrait field because it was just a it was a parallel field to the fashion world, and to this day there's still a connection. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't separate them. What were the magazines back then that like you like had to get into? Like, what was what was like the prime? You had to get into magazines to get the bigger work. Yeah, because everybody looked at the magazines for inspiration. What was, was like, like, what was like your dream publication? Like, what was the what was the the title back then? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I would have to say I, I would say it was probably Rolling Stone. Maybe. Was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be a dream. Even yeah. even today, I would say. <laughs> yeah, even today. Um, I, you know, I did a lot. I worked a lot in the entertainment industry, um, and I started working in the music industry all because of my shift, like sort of splitting my 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 uh direction between fashion and portraiture the yeah. portraiture took me into the music industry just by mistake kind I know you went from clothes to faces basically from fashions to yeah 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 i never stopped i continued i continue to this day still work in the quote unquote the little bit of fashion industry that's in denver yeah Ruth. but back then that 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 shift from going from just trying to get fashion work to starting to try to get editorial 
work in the portrait industry, specifically celebrities and music musicians and artists, took me to Nashville. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, it, it's just um, I did a lot of it. back then. People would advertise. Photographers would advertise in directories. There were these fat books that were filled with every photographer, commercial photographer in the country, who would buy space to buy a page, buy two pages, buy four pages. It was expensive to sell to to um, to um, advertise your advertise yourself to get major work. And once the book was published. The, the publishers would send it out to all the ad agencies, all the record labels, all the magazines, and then the creatives in those places would look through the book when they had a project, and they'd find somebody's work that would fit wow. the direction that they wanted to go with their project. So that was that was before internet. You had a literal book to find to get to get work. Say that again. What to to find work before the internet? You had a literal book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To get work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, there was no searching on the internet because wow. that was, I mean, I think, I mean, that was at the beginning of the internet. Yeah, I was going to say, because, you know, I was, I was, I'm born in 89, so all the 90s I was a kid. So, you know, yeah. that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. So it's basically the yellow pages for work. Yeah, it was the work. There were a couple of books that were, that were prominent. One was called the Black Book and one was called the Workbook. And another one was called the Alternative Pick which the alternative pick was created specifically for the music industry. So you could ever, you could advertise in all those books and it would cost you a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, I advertised in your niche. The, yeah. I, I advertised in what was called the workbook and the alternative pick. Um, and one day, probably early on about 1993 or 94, I got a phone call from a record company in Nashville and they, uh, the art director I was got on the phone with me, and she was very, very engaging and very, very complimentary. And mentioned to me that she had reached out recently to like an A-list photographer in New York who turned down the photo shoot for her label because her artist wasn't an A-list artist. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I won't. Not mention, enough, not I won't enough. mention a photographer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, very prominent photographer. So I was the second pick in that situation, and that opened the door for me to work in Nashville, which opened up a lot of other doors in the music yeah. industry for me. Um, music so. City USA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I mean and to this day I have contacts in that industry. I don't work as I don't work as uh, much of that world as I used to, but I still work with artists. As you've noticed, we've worked on projects together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What um <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what are the the key elements when you're trying to kind of capture somebody's portrait to like get their essence out of them? What what kind of goes into your thinking on that? Um, that's interesting. I don't know if I think about that. Uh, I do actually. I do. <laughs> I was like, I know you got it. <laughs> uh, I think. No, I think what happened. I, I they have to feel comfortable yeah. with me or whoever it is on the, that side of the camera. Um. And I'm, and that's one of my gifts. I'm not sure how that happened. I don't know if it was natural for me in my life long before I started to become a photographer, or if I learned how to do that because I had to. Mm. Um, but I have this ability to make people feel comfortable, and that safe that safe space makes it possible to go to the next step with them. Um, that's huge. Yeah, it is huge. It's really big, um, and I get. I, I continually get that feedback from people all the time about the process of working with me as a photographer. Yeah. The, you make them comfortable. I mean, that's, I, I almost, the final frame is obviously like the most important, but I feel like second in line to that is the shoot was great and I was super comfortable and it was a blast that trust and that being, com I mean, cause you can tell on camera, when somebody when the when the subject is comfortable and having fun and that's i mean that's i feel like the soft skills the people skills are almost just as important as it being in focus oh no i agree i you know um we just did a you didn't work on this um you do you weren't at this project that i just did with nigel last fall with um i can't and again i'm not going to mention the artist's name but it was it was a very prominent artist, and 
uh, we did a we worked on a video, and I was brought in to, to you know as like the background guy to do behind the scenes and possibly do some PR for the artist. And um, it's really obvious when the subject, quote unquote, subject can't get out of their own way yeah. to let themselves be seen. And that that was that was the case in this particular shoot, and it, it I finally got through that. Yeah. But you just never know what's going on with people, um, and some and some people can't get out of the way to let themselves be present. Um, so, however that process works with my energy and theirs, it usually clicks. It usually clicks. Yeah, um, I think I can make people feel safe. I'm a safe guy. It's like I'm not out to you know. It's like people like me. I'm easy to talk to. Um, I think I've got gentle energy and I just think it makes it easy for folks to show up, to show up. Are there any like specific techniques that you use to get them to that place? Uh -huh. I'm self-deprecating. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> Stand with Nigel. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So true. And, and it's like, I, 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 and it's like, I don't, I, it wasn't a calculated skill. It's just an, it's just a play that comes from a place of honesty. I can like, I just can like say, you know what, you know, what, I'm, I'm just a human. I, I do, I do things badly. I'm, I'm just as I, I, you know, it's just like, I can make fun of myself. Yeah. And that's I, huge. Think that, I think that creates a really, really safe soft spot for people to show up. I mean, that's, that's a classic. I mean, that's, that's one of the, the classic ways to make people feel comfortable. And it's just, you know, it, there's a reason it's timeless. It works great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and nobody ever taught me that. I don't I don't know how that happened. I, I mean, it might have been it might have been hanging around Nigel for a while. <laughs> might have been what? What's that? Hanging around Nigel for a while. Oh well, no, this has been going off for a long time. But oh, that, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, truthfully, when I first went to New York City, um, in the late late seventies, early nineteen eighty, um, I had my first assignments. Well. I went to New York City with a thousand dollars, a Nikon camera, and about and two lenses. I mean, I was married, I had a wife, but as far as the money that I could use to start a business, that's what I had to work with. So um, I rented a, I shared a studio with a couple other photographers in in Manhattan, in what was called the the photo district, and. Uh, I started getting out there and making phone calls and trying to get business. And when I moved to New York, I had left Texas to go to New York. And I had a few connections with a couple of magazines in Texas. And when I got to New York, I called them just to let them know that I was there. And one of the magazines from Houston called me up and they were doing a story on, um, I can't remember how many people, I think it was five different quote unquote celebrities that they were doing small spot interviews with. For their magazine in Houston, and they assigned me to do the photographs for all of these people. So my initial, my first celebrity photo shoots in New York, way before I even started trying to go into portraiture, where I was assigned to shoot photograph Ralph Lauren, Philip Johnson, an American architect, um, the Dalai Lama, and a Broadway actress named Carlin Glenn, who was just in a brand new Broadway show called The Best Photo Whorehouse in Texas. So, what a lineup. Okay. Yeah. So here I am, green. I'm like a new shoot right out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to go and I'm going to like show up at Ralph Lauren's polo office on 7th Avenue in fashion, fashion, fashionista world. And I'm going to feel comfortable and confident photographing Ralph Lauren. Um, that was like trial by fire. Yeah. I sort of got thrown into the pit and I had to survive. Which is, uh, which is, I mean, that's, that's the story. That's how you do it. And that's how it happened. <laughs> that's how it happened. Well, what's crazy for you, especially is like, talk about being thrown into the fire. Like you talk, you're, you're, you're photographing big names when you're green. Yeah. Like that's, God, that must've been just, w was it more exciting or terrifying? Oh, it was both. I yeah. don't think was it more. I think. Um, <clears throat> well, the uh, the photo, the photo shoot with the American architect Philip Johnson was terrifying. Yeah, because I spent forty five minutes or an hour with him in his office, and I don't think he said two words to me. No, 
<laughs> you didn't talk. Oh my god, it's so oh. awkward. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, maybe your viewers will, will research Philip Johnson. He was a very, very famous American architect. Um, he, um, his, his, um, one of his most famous projects is in New Canaan, Connecticut. It's called the Glass House, and it's a house that's totally made out of glass. You can see in the, from all angles. Cool. Um, he, um, but a very, very prominent uh, architect. In fact, he he designed what's called the Cash Register Building in Denver. That you is know, that, literally the most famous build. That's like the building of the Denver skyline. Like, yeah, that's it. It's the only building that makes Denver skyline Denver. So, yeah. absolutely, I know that building. Yeah, that's his. That's one of his projects. I don't that's know. Awesome. I don't know the history of it. Um, no, super cool. That's that is literally like the iconic. That yeah. makes the Denver skyline iconic. Yeah, no, I I have to agree. That is it's very noticeable and very recognizable. Um. So anyway, that was the guy. And uh, yeah, I've got a very, very, very strong portrait of him. It's too bad I didn't have things available to share with you at this point. I could have sent him, we could have seen it. Um, I don't know, is that something I could send you in the meantime that you could use? Yeah. On the topic of celebrity, um, what are some of your most memorable experiences photographing celebrities and what made them special or even challenging oh how challenging let me think as your website has as quite a few names and faces does it i haven't looked at it for a while. <laughs> the big one that stood out to me was michael bolden <laughs> oh yeah michael bolden yeah um well um it's not like i'm, I'm not trying to remember no was. no you're fine yeah yeah Trying to remember who trying to remember stories, not the people. <laughs> yeah. Um well Mike I mean Michael was done for a magazine story for Hello magazine in London. Um I I had an agent representing me who, who I was actually just represented by again recently. Um, but we just she ended our relationship because the business has changed so much that she had been out of it for 10 years and I, I I warned her when she wanted to get back into it that I don't think you understand how much this industry's changed in 10 years. And she jumped back in and after about six months, she realized that she didn't have the skills to manage the way it's gone. Um, so that's just an aside. So, But she was my agent back in early 2000s and she would, she would bring me in to do stories that she proposed to magazines celebrity magazines and entertainment magazines and when she got the assignment approved she would pick the photo one of the photographers from her group and she would assign us the the project and that's how i got to photo shoot with michael 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 bolton um because i was in new york he was in connecticut and um it was called there was those photo shoots were called at homes meaning yeah. you go to their home and you take as many pictures as you can in the amount of time they give you <laughs> how long and did you have I had oh Michael was pretty he was uh, he was pretty gracious. We had I I was probably there for three hours. Oh wow, yeah, with him. That's like a uh, solid half day. Yeah, no, it was it was a long time and it was really it was it was fun. Um, well, what the interesting thing about the shoot with Michael Bolton is he had a he had a he uh he had his own studio in his home, like most so many people do. <clears throat> and as we were looking for areas in his place to do photos. We walked into the studio and there was a picture of this artist on, on the wall whose name was Kanye. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I never heard of him. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, that's, how, that's how long ago this was. <laughs> if this was I'm, I'm telling you how long ago that was. That's 20 years ago. Good uh, or bad, never heard of him. <laughs> there, was, there was nothing neither good or bad about it. It was just yeah. like, I just, I just, Fresh. oh, this Kanye, we just did something together. Yeah. He was, he was, um, he was, his girlfriend living, I don't think they were married. He was, um, oh, what's her name? I can't think of her name right now. Very, very famous actress. I kept hoping she would come downstairs. To, <laughs> to do something together, yeah. <laughs> you might come. To, yeah. Um, but that was the first time, I think that was the first time I did anything with a digital camera. And the only reason I did that was because my assistant, 
who was one of my full-time assistants at the time, had just purchased a new Canon D something. And at the end of the shoot, we had done it. We had done it. We had just finished doing a shoot of him, a really beautiful shoot of him sitting in the doorway of his home underneath a portico. And it was sunset time. And um, I finished my role, my film. And she goes, you want to shoot my camera? I go, oh, yeah. I go, Michael, can we hang out for a minute? He goes, sure. And that was the first image I ever shot with a digital camera was Michael Bolton. Wow. Uh, yeah. So anyway, it was cool. Seam a seamless transition into the new, the new media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does Mike, how does my color look to you on your? A little, a little blown out. I wonder what happened. I'm not sure. Let me, hold on. Let me see something. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That's weird. I don't know how that happened. How do I look? You look great. <laughs> hold on. Is that better? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. Yeah, yeah. Is that better? Is the other stuff not good now? No, it's fine. Okay. Again, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing to me is that it goes out. It's uh, it can look how it looks. I'm not I'm not bound by perfection on this by any means. And okay. that, uh, yeah, all good. How long is your segment? Is it segment? Uh, yeah, we do about an hour, hour and a half, depending on kind of where we where we go with oh, stuff. Do gonna... people actually listen to me talk that long? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure you'd be able to listen to me. Talk that long. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Um, no, that's, oh my God, that's a great, so you literally switched from film to digital in the middle of a Michael Bolton shoot. Yeah. In fact, Fantastic. That, um, again, another story. Well, I have another story. All the stories. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, I had, um, at the same time during the same period of time, things started to happen very fast. Once I, um, <clears throat> started promoting my portrait of work in that mm. in industry at the time, they were I think that the editors and the, the creators for all the publications were hungry for new new talents. Um, I can remember that my portfolio got called in very early on for at the Def Jam um, with uh, Russell, what's his name, that started Def Jam Records. Oh my um, God, it's gonna. Uh, yeah, um, my per got... my first instinct was Wilson because of the. No, it's not, no, 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 no. He's not a football player. Uh, I'm <laughs> so embarrassed that I can't think of this right now. No, it, uh, no. Um, well, maybe I'll think of it in a minute. Damn it. Uh, um, Rand is not it. Uh, oh, it just went right out of my head. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna. You keep talking. I'm gonna Google it. Okay. Yeah. Google it. See who. <laughs> um, Simmons. 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 Yeah, I need to go here. There we go. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So um, anyway, that was like an early on about Colton. I didn't get I didn't get engaged by them in any way, but that was fun knowing that that, that had happened. Yeah. Um, but um, so I was pursuing I was pursuing a lot of I was you know personal promotions to that market. Um, I knew that there was a, I had a sense of comfort in oh no comfort I can't say that I never felt comfortable in a, in a in a city full of sharks that just wasn't true. But I felt like I had a I had loyal business customers in the fashion advertise in the fashion advertising and fashion catalog world. So it wasn't like I let it go. I just I just started putting more attention into that entertainment, music, portrait, and editorial world. Um, I got hired to do um, a a PR shoot with an artist named Julie Cruz uh, with Warner Brother Records. Julie Cruz worked with um, David Lynch. Mm. On um, one of my favorites Peak, on Twin Peaks. I don't know if you remember that TV show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, David Lynch doesn't miss. He's he's. Um, so in her, um, how did this happen? Her agent was a, we we sort of wind and dined each other, and he he hooks me up with Warner Brother Records L.A. and Warner Brothers gave him the go ahead to hire me to do PR with Julie for her new upcoming project that she had just finished with David Lynch. So I was like thrilled. Yeah, um, of course. I was like thrilled in some way. I went, okay, this is it. This is a big step. I'm going to get to the next level with this. Um, and I was a little bit nervous because the David Lynch was attached to it. Um, so I was living in Brooklyn at the time. And uh, I, I remember this. It was a Sunday night, 3.30 in the morning. My phone rang. And my phone never rings at three thirty in the morning, so I pick up the phone, and there's this voice that somebody sounds like he's like he's like a 
like a, a young guy from the Midwest. He goes, hello, is this EJ Carr? I go, yeah. He goes, this is David Lynch. I go, I go, hi, David. Know. <laughs> hi, David. <laughs> I'm like, like, not like, do you know what time it is? It's like, oh, yes, yes. What would you like? <laughs> I go, hi, David. He goes, he goes, I just wanted to touch base with you before tomorrow. <laughs> but I said, you know what time it is? <laughs> he goes, um, he goes, I hope you do a really good job tomorrow. He goes, because <laughs> if to be honest with you, I did the photos for her album cover and they don't really look good. <laughs> so, he goes, David Lynch says to you, so yeah. he, he photographed it doesn't look good yeah sure. oh, all right um <laughs> uh, so do you think like moment <laughs> yeah how did you respond to that how did you respond <laughs> i go i don't remember how i responded all i know is i didn't fall back asleep yeah <laughs> how could you um <laughs> so here's the thing here's what happened for me so I did the photo shoot. She was lovely. It was wonderful. It was a great photo shoot. I did. I did. And in fact, that's something I can send you as well. Like I can find you. I can find you the final image that was used. Yeah, on. I love that. Um, <clears throat> I've got it signed by Julie. She passed away last year. Um, hmm. Not very old. Uh, but anyway, um, not that to just, I don't mean to dismiss that. Um, at the end of the day, I was so, my adrenaline was so pumped for that, that at the end of the day, when it was over, it was a really big lesson for me because I thought, is that it? I think in my mind, it was going to be everything. Right, but right, right. In, in the end, you know what I'm saying? Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, the thing that you think is going to change your life is just another job. It, 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 was, it was wonderful, but it was yeah. like, I felt the same at the end of the day that I did the day before. Yeah, you weren't like a different person after the photo shoot was finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the good uh, here's the thing that I love about the world that I've worked in. I've got relationships, and I've got ongoing relationships with not active, but I mean, if I call somebody up or if I connect with them through social media or email, it, it doesn't matter who it is. We have we we can communicate still, which I think is. If there's anything, if there's more value than money, I would say that's it. No, hundred percent. Yeah, I would. No, say I mean, it's all it's all relationships at the end of the day. Like that's, yeah, that is, I think, what makes a successful career. It, I mean, obviously, the work needs to be there, and it needs yeah. to be good. But yeah. how you treat people and how they feel about you and all that—that's French our friends. Yeah, how it works. <laughs> So, um, on that, on that I feel, I feel grateful. I am grateful for that. Yeah. hundred percent more on the, uh, on the technical side. Um, are there any specific photography or lighting techniques that you kind of are your go-to for uh, like a really solid portrait to get the, like your specific style or mood? I don't think there is. I think, I, I think I, I think everything I do is dependent it, it's I don't there was a time let me back that up yeah early on when I first when I first went in this direction I had a technique that I used and I had a, a roughly a lighting system that I used well first of all everything was, I did was in a studio everything was shot on a Hasselblad camera so the format everything was square mm -hmm. and again this is something I could send you just as a sample yeah. um and I would, and, and I altered my processing with my film and processing to uh, start what was called cross processing. I would shoot um, negative film. Let me think if this is right. How did I do this? I would shoot colored transparency film and I'd process it in negative chemicals with my lab, which would cross process the colors. So what, what I would get back instead of a transparency, I'd get a contact sheet from the negatives which were because they were processed in the wrong chemistry. So rather than transparency, I had to get a negative, then they'd make a contact sheet. And then I would pick my images that I liked, and then I would give them instructions how to color balance everything. Wow. And I'd make the color balance match, the look of the color balance match on everything I did. So you had to give instructions for the grade rather than doing it yourself? For the color grading, basically, yeah. Wow. Because I couldn't do it myself then. Yeah. 
that's that's so hard yeah <laughs> um so my entire portfolio which i i still have like 12 of them yeah. i had you had to have so many portfolios then because you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't get found on you weren't found on digital image you couldn't find you on the internet right there was nothing so to, right. internet so to it. i would send out fedex was like my major bill there you go i was sending out you know weekly five six seven eight polar uh portfolios a week to different places um that is a, <laughs> things have gotten way more cost effective now and faster and faster yeah there's a link rather than here. Let me snail mail you a portfolio that yeah. cost me twenty dollars to make. I mean, the paradigm of shooting film for commercial photography now is 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 almost impossible because everybody wants it now. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's what like twenty four hour turnaround or less. Or less. Yeah. 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 I I have a buddy that does uh, video and a big selling point for his. Uh, he does a lot of like uh, corporate conference work. And he he sells them on that he will give like a movie to them for the you know the final day of the conference. So he'll do like a you know twelve hour turnaround for like a two minute video. I'm like that's you just don't sleep. No, I know like, that's insane, but it yeah. works. And, and I was there. We did a, a job in Vegas for Audi, and the video was it was great. It showed on the on the big screen, and everybody was you know at this after party, and it was a total blast. It worked great. Yeah. But it was like the amount of work that went into that was uh, was substantial, right? It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so did I answer your question? Did that hundred percent? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's it's it's. Well, it sounds like it's so actually no. Interestingly, so a follow up to that. So hey there, fellow creatives. Conversations with creators dives deep into the minds of successful filmmakers, artists, musicians, and all around awesome people. We are looking for some kick ass sponsors to help us keep this show on the road. If you want to reach a tribe of dedicated listeners who are just as passionate about creating as you are, then look no further. Our audience is full of people who appreciate a good laugh and are always on the lookout for new ways to fuel their creativity. So, Let's team up and create some magic together. We'll work with you to make sure that your brand is showcased in the best light possible. And who knows, maybe we'll even become lifelong friends. Just imagine, years from now, we'll be reminiscing about the good old days when we first teamed up to take the world by storm. Send us an email at noah at snowmanfilms.net to say hey and get the ball rolling. Now back to the episode. That's kind of the older process. Now with digital, is there are there favorite techniques that you use, or is it kind of like what um, is there? Do you kind of match the personality of the person with the technique, or with the lighting setup, or is it you know how do you kind of how do you what what goes into your mind with that? I th- uh, I met I uh, the technique goes with the person. Yeah, yeah, with the person whoever they are. So like, okay, so say, I'll give you two examples, super bubbly outgoing and a little bit more thoughtful and brooding. What, what are like, how does the lighting differ on those? Based on a personality? Yeah. Um, so let me back, no, well, let me not back you up, but back up. Oh, I yeah. think, um, in my mind, people have stories of who they are it's my it's my story about them mm-hmm. so that's where i start usually um so um like okay, let me use nigel as an example yeah yeah okay i think that's a good example if you don't know who we're talking about listen to episode one of this podcast and you will know <laughs> okay. oh i will and him um, so i i've i've invited nigel to do a photo shoot with me i don't know how many times <laughs> five or six times yeah i bet i bet and it hasn't happened yet <laughs> <laughs> But I do have a series of images of Nigel. Yeah. That I've taken and on when we're on shoots together and they're wonderful. Um, but if I were gonna photograph Nigel, you've been around him enough that when you're involved in conversation with Nigel, he's he gets like this, right? <laughs> yeah. You ever notice? <laughs> yeah. I wanna do that picture and he yeah. had the time to do that. It's gonna be. It's got to be a candid, basically. Yeah, but with Nigel, my lighting, I would do something that would be classic with Nigel. It would. I mean, see the lighting on me right now. Yeah. 
that I would approach you right yeah on the side r- r- rant. um so if somebody if I were photographing uh a comedian just for argument yeah yeah female um I might want to do something like that on the stage with like stage lighting um really animated um as opposed to like a politician or a um another like a male actor say Mm -hmm. um i just i really think that who their their persona in the world impacts my story about them and i try to to marry that i love that if that helps yeah totally totally yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna deep dive a little deeper because i'm so interested so like Say, should I get a drink? Should I get a drink? <laughs> hey, listen, I got a drink going. <laughs> We're in the evening. We're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to, you're welcome to, man. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. Um tell me, so just just for like an example's sake, tell me how you would think of lighting a female comedian versus a male drama actor you mean like the source that i would use yeah like what how how would you think about i i think if i were shooting a female comedian um i'm just i'm trying to think of somebody who i would use as an example there's so many people though i can't think of somebody specifically (laughs) i would i would i would keep it high key with a, a, a sort of high key friendly looking open Powerful. I would. I. I mean, so much of the part of the story is what they wear. Yeah, is the wardrobe. So I would want to make sure that that person was wearing wardrobe that reflects who they are. Um, whereas, um, say an actor or drama. If I was photographing a Robert De Niro, sure, I'd probably be have to take some nerve pills to start with. But um, <laughs> and, uh, um. Take a shot beforehand. There you go. Yeah, I would first of all, that would but probably be black and white. Okay. Yeah. Um. I would. Li- I would probably like to do something with him in like a really textured, big, like over knit sweater. Um, really like strong pose with strong directional lighting, just to bring out his character. And I would probably shoot it with a long lens so I could compress it a little bit and make it really tight. Um, I mean that's how I then just. Really quickly, that's how I might approach something like that. I love that. So now that's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's like I'm not score format if I were still it's such a good example of like it's it's matching personality, it's matching who they are in the world and um communicating that visually, which sure. uh is the again, I think that you know, my audience is exactly like that's that's the kind of stuff that is subjective and is artistic and is based on your taste and is why you're at where you're at, which is right. so cool. Yeah. yeah I love that. <laughs> I, I, told, I, I completely agree, by the way, uh, Robert De Niro in black and white. I think that's awesome. Yeah. That, I mean, that's how I would approach that. Or I would do the same thing with say Marty Scorsese. Yeah. That, yeah. You no, know, I mean, my, I mean a dream. Well, what would, would a dream would it be to have Marty, uh, Joe Pesci, um, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and um, Harvey Keitel <laughs> together. <laughs> Again, real deep breath before you start and then go. <laughs> Especially with Marty there. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And maybe John, I could add him to the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's just son, De Niro just did a new film called Wise Guy. Yeah. It- yeah he's he's just he keeps going and he has any uh this will date a little bit but he just had he's now having another kid yes yeah. <laughs> like 79 79 years old it's like he's like i don't care him and anthony quinn i think anthony <laughs> quinn babies when he was 80 something yeah <laughs> <laughs> um Actually, no, I, it's funny. It, you completely just answered my next question, which was what makes a, a ordinary portrait stand out from an amazing one. I think, you you know, capturing personality is is is, yeah. is huge. And the way uh, you I think have, about I have, it. I have, a, I have a portrait of, um, I'll send you this too. If you, maybe you could let me know after this. You could send me an email if you when you're doing this. Yeah. And I can give you, I can send you, you know, 70 Yeah, 100%. 
Is that fine? 72 DPI? That'd be great. Yeah. Um, send me send me links so that I can link them for people so they can go to I want them to go to your your spot, your website. Oh, so links would be better than the actual Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. Um so what you want for this? I have a I have a friend who's an artist um who was an animation artist in New York at the time. <clears throat> he did animation for a a um legend, Richie ha Richie Havens. You know who Richie is? I don't. Okay, Richie Havens was um he passed away about I don't know six or seven years ago. Uh rock folk artist. He was the opening act for Woodstock. Okay. Oh wow. For Woodstock. He opened Woodstock because they didn't have they didn't have they they couldn't get I don't remember exactly what the issue was, but he was on stage for I forget how long, but I met Richie in New York. I met him in his office. My friend this artist took me to meet Richie one day. And Richie agreed to come to my studio to do a photo shoot. So Richie Havens came to my studio. And if you do a Google search, you'll see him. Um, oops, did I lose you? I'm here. Oh, you're here. So I did yeah. some. I got to get you. I was I was standing too still. <laughs> eventually, eventually we'll get this in an in-person studio. But for now, I just want to I want to get it done. So yeah. on Zoom, we are. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, how did I get you? I want to get you bigger on my screen. And I, oh, wait, I know how I got it. Here we go. Oh, okay. Anyway, he, Richie um, came into my studio and uh, but there was no planning of what I was going to do. All I knew is that I was going to do a photo shoot with this legend. Yeah. And um, so we did the photo shoot and Richie is black, tall, black. He was a folk singer in a village in the 60s. Well, it's like Bob Dylan and all those artists and um, became, he had his, then he went off on his own direction and he was the opening act in Woodstock. So people in the world and that, that my age and a lot of people know who Richie is. And one of my most famous portraits is of Richie Havens and you can't see his face. Um, I saw portrait. that on your website. Yeah. I know exactly the photo you're talking about. He has he, all the rings on. Boys and yeah. Right? Yeah. That's Richie. I, think I love that photo. Yeah. That's Richie. I love that photo. Um, there's so much that's crazy too because there's you don't see his face but there's so much personality there and you know who he is i mean if you know who richie was everybody knows who that is yeah um so i mean to this day that's one of the most recognizable portraits that i think i've ever done nice one of them yeah absolutely what like i'm interested actually like what is you know with with me being based in video there's always such a shot list and a plan and you know, you, you save, you save the headache in pre-production, but it seems like for a photo shoot, especially with capturing somebody's essence, you kind of just have to roll with it. So going in with a conversation rather than a shot list almost seems to be more effective. Is that yeah. kind of on track? Yeah, that's pretty much on track. Um, you know, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's terrifying I, to me. <laughs> that? That's terrifying to me. But no, I mean you mastered it. I I love it. Yeah. Uh, I've said this so many times that I, what I love, I you know I had just finished teaching a class and I don't teach. I'm not. I don't consider my pronoun is not educator. Um, it turns out I'm probably pretty good at it, but it's ne I I never identified. I never wanted to be that. But I've been asked in the last few years to teach a, an elective class at Arapaho Community College. Yeah. Um, in their photo department, and I just finished teaching this class for the second time. Um, and it's the, they they created a title I would not have created a title. They created this title called Fashion and Glamour Photography. <laughs> and the glamour part gave me like I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, I've come. And everything's to misty. Yeah, but but the reality is, I've learned. I've you know what I learned from teaching. I learned what I didn't know. That's what I learned from teaching. Okay. Um, but I, anyway, that's a that's a great quote. What right. I learned from teaching is I learned what I didn't know. I truly, I just like, oh, I don't know how to do that. That's yeah, it. yeah, no, it's it's a totally executing and effective teaching are two completely different skills. Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, so let me stay on track with this. Um, yeah. So 
somewhere along the line in this elective class, this group of students, they'd ask me, um, how did they put it to me? What's the difference between advertising and editorial? Mm. What's the difference in the production or preparation for edit advertising and editorial? And my feeling about the advertising world that I've worked in, that by the time I got to the point of doing the photograph in an advertising project, it was already worked out. Everything right. was done. All I had to do was execute. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean the plan is there. The feed, the, the lookbook is there. The style, all of that stuff is figured. Everything. Out. It's all been pre-planned. It's all been gone over and over and over. By the seven bosses. So there's <laughs> serendipity in that process, of course. Yeah. Um, because things do happen. But basically, you know what you're trying because you're working to a, a, a you're working to a blueprint in a way. This is what this is what we want it to look like. How are we going to make that happen? In editorial, there's a lot of room there mm. for artistic expression. And that fits me way more organically. Even though I love it. It's not just a look, it's a it's a it's your style. It's it's the story behind it. That's why they hire photographers for stories like that. Yeah. They go, yeah. Like how you interpret the idea. So That's way more fun. <laughs> so for me, I love going into quote unquote a room with all the pieces and then putting it together when I'm there. Yeah. To me, other than like, here's the blueprint, follow this blueprint. You're like, okay, thanks for the check. But when it's like, hey, you know, let's tell a story, you're like, now we're, now I can, you know, paint with this. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, and, and what's funny is now, because the students wanted you to go deep on that, you have an answer to it. <laughs> you know what the hardest part for me to teach was a lighting because yeah. I've never ever worked with a formula for lighting ever, mm. ever. I mean, I learned it. I went to school. I learned what portraiture lighting was. I learned what the ratios were, you know, I learned what Rembrandt lighting was. I learned what split lighting was. I learned what butterfly lighting, but I've never ever like determined ahead of time those kinds of things in a photo shoot, I let them happen when I'm there. Mm. Like, well, I see when I see what I like. Oh, this is interesting. I'll see it when I, I'll know when I see it. Yeah. But that's also dangerous when your client says that to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was one shooting a TV. But I client that says, I'll know yeah. when I see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I remember that was the most the most chilling down my back moment was I had a client come up to me during, we're doing like a TV pilot and she goes, she, she comes up behind me as we're like live with like 20 people going. She's like, I don't like this shot. And I was like, okay, what would you, what would you prefer? She's like, I don't know, but I don't like this shot. I'm like, yeah, right. Thank you so much for that insightful fucking Jesus. I know. Any, any info would be great. Oh. <laughs> No. So you know what I've you know what I've learned from that? Yeah. Like the hard way? I've learned that yes, they didn't know what they wanted in the first place. Correct, correct. Or they're not willing to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. They're not willing to be transparent. Which is which is the worst because then they don't that's just a losing battle if they don't know what they yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I find the best clients I've ever had are the ones that I have a real relationship with. Yeah. That become friends and that yeah. are well, but but that they're but you have you have a relationship where you can be open and honest, and the, and you can be your ego can be strong enough to go. They go, you know, that's really not as good as you can do. And I go, yeah, you know, you're right. <laughs> yeah. No, I I honestly, that would I would love to hear that. That's not as good as you can do. I was like, oh, you want to you want to go? All right, let's let's yeah. like let's take this and let's do yeah, something okay. here. Right. Absolutely. That pushes you. That makes you. That's that's the kind of comment that makes you better, right? Not just a not just a blanket. Like I'm not sure what it is, but fix it. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. I mean, trust me, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, over all these years, I've heard people say, "I'll know when I'll know when I see it." It's like, no, I need more information than that. Okay. Yeah, and that sort of takes them off the hook for their responsibility. You gotta like, you gotta have, you know, what you gotta have is like a. Just be like, here, look through this, look through this book of photos and just tell me, tell me what sticks out to you. I do that all the time now. I don't I my own words anymore. No, how can you? It yeah. has to be the look. And you're like, oh, you like that look? Cool. We can make that. 
Yeah. I use Pinterest a lot for, for, for but the, photos and for kids' birthday parties. <laughs> yeah, that's on my side. <laughs> right, it's like, hey, print these signs out for the you know the Wreck It Ralph birthday party. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, Pinterest makes total sense. Yeah, no, I I really I ask people to send me photos of what their of their vision. Yeah, along with the purchase order. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, you want this look? Cool. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a budget above what we talked about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, outside, we've talked a lot about about photography, which is fantastic. And I also want to know because I like to know you as a person. Okay. Outside of your career, what is like? What's your thing? What's your hobby that makes you relax? Takes you away from you know the the hustle and bustle. Um. So. Um. I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, um, outside of in, outside of Pittsburgh. I say Pittsburgh um, because it was my 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 mailing address as a kid was Pittsburgh one five two two five, and um, I had a I had my uncle. One of my uncles was um, into fishing, and uh, he was a steel worker in Pittsburgh. He worked in a steel mill for a company named the American Bridge. <laughs> they build bridges, and uh, he was a fisherman. He was a <laughs> That good name for the company, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so oh, interesting. Uh, do you know the movie The Deer Hunter? Yes, yeah, that was filmed where I grew up. Wow, that story is that's my story in a way. Is that movie, and that's Robert De Niro and uh, Chris Walken and Meryl Streep. The um, dream, the dream photo shoot, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's funny, that's interesting. Do you see that? Oh, yeah. uh, anyway, my uncle was a fisherman, and he used to take me fishing. And my other uncle was a photographer. Oh, this is good. This is good. Actually, there we go. Uh, his brother, his brother, two of my uncles. Yeah. So, um, my uncle Vince was a fisherman. He'd take me fishing, and he was into fly fishing. So he's a blue collar guy in Western Pennsylvania who used to be a fly fisherman, which is incongruous because it, it was never in my mind. It was a, a blue collar thing. It was like a very sophisticated sport. But he introduced me to that very young. And um, it's been a passion for my whole life. Wow. Um, not as much as I would like to now. I've traveled all around. I fished in Canada and Alaska and all over the Northwest. And now I live in Colorado, so it's really accessible here. Um, how, so, is, how is fly fishing here compared to other states? Um, well, be, beyond the amount of the people that have now taken up the sport, and, it, and after the pandemic, it was just extraordinary. How many people are now on the rivers that you anything to... outside? Just, I mean, I, I got into mountain biking during it and it just exploded. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, totally. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. But so, if you can find a spot. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just finding myself traveling further away from the central Denver to get the places further away from the places that I thought were outside of Denver. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's okay. That's okay. I won't um, have you give away your spot because that would be total sacrilege. Uh, how have you how how successful have you been have you got some good ones as far as fishing yeah oh no i know i've been i've had great experiences for sure yeah that's all awesome. in colorado though fishing is pretty good here yeah it's, yeah so and the other thing well is while i was still when i was in new york um i got to a point one day where i i did I realized that I needed a break from the supermodels. Not, how can I explain this? I didn't want to hear another famous person complain about the fact that they didn't like how their hair was being done by the hair and makeup person when they were getting paid twelve or fifteen thousand dollars a day to be there to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're when you're sweating your ass off in the lights and then you've yeah. been there for fifteen hours. And... I'm making half of what they're making. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not to do, uh, I was I was pretty <laughs> what I was getting. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, hundred percent. We were just like under your breath, like shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I had a home in New Jersey, right outside of New York, and across the street from my home, relatively, was the country club of the town. I lived in a town called Maplewood, New Jersey, um, and across the street was the Maplewood Country Club, and I would drive by the country club every day. And one day driving past the country club at sunset, I'm looking at it and there's this gorgeous scene 
of the golf green with the sun setting and the trees and the green grass. Yeah. And I went back a few days later and I stuck my camera through the chain link fence and I took a photo of that scene. And I shared it with the guy who is like considered the superintendent for the golf course, the guy who takes care of the grounds. Yeah. Familiar with golf at all? It's smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, the, I hit it off with the superintendent. We became friends and he gave me the, the, the freedom to go on the golf course and take pictures whenever I wanted. I just had to let him know. That's awesome. That became therapy for me. Yeah, totally. Um, at the same time, just I, it's literally because it, I mean I get that completely because it's a personal project just for you, just having fun by yourself. Maybe you listen to music, like whatever it is. Yes. You're just creating for the sake of creating, which is it, it, that, best therapy. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. At the same time, I had just been married, and my my now my ex wife, her husband, her father played golf, and I thought, wow, what a great way to get to know him. I'm going to start to play golf. Boom. It's like I was like. Oh yeah, when I look back on that, I go, "Wow, that was an interesting decision." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that just grew for me. Um, and so that beginning of those images at that golf course connected. We moved to Ireland in 2007 as a family, and um, very jealous of that. I love Ireland. We we went to Ireland uh, for kind of a, a pass past honeymoon like a little bit later and i i'm irish and scottish and when i like i do you have any any heritage in you from there well my ex-wife did yeah like you can it was, it was i like feel your aunt it's crazy i went there, i was like holy shit like this is home holy like i was in love with ireland well so i don't have any but when i came back to the states i had a dna test because i was convinced i did <laughs> that's how great the kind of, no, the people there are just incredible like, it's just it's the best if you ever have a chance to go to ireland do it it's amazing i was there for three years yeah oh my god that's uh down the line when i'm rich and famous uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh the first like you know summer home I and mean, not even summer because it's you know it rains a bunch but like i i would love to get like a cottage in ireland just yeah in in the south because it's just ah you can feel everything you can feel the history you can feel the hair it's just it's the best could i can carry, I, carry on carry on <laughs> well, could i put a background on this while we're talking do it do it what do i do it under video anybody that's on anybody that's on uh on audio right now if you go on youtube you're going to be able to see ej's background in a second hold on here hold on i'll show you where i live i love it we uh when we went we had a Airbnb that oh yeah 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 so Ring of Carry yeah yeah the best we had we had an Airbnb where <laughs> our backyard was a field of sheep and then the Gap of Dunlow oh there you go I don't exactly. I literally like I was there and I was like this isn't real this is too picturesque to be reality so you were in Carry I was this is that's my house oh my god that's where I live wow. I'm, I'm covering it up. <laughs> That's the number That's one incredible. Question. I mean, you can't, there's no, there's nothing better than that. That's incredible. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, it is, a, it is a, it is essentially a, a built up cottage on the coast with the overlooking the ocean in Ireland. And it's as beautiful as you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get back to the end and do that? Let's see. I think you should just leave it. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll leave it. Um, so um, anyway, when I moved to Ireland, we moved there in 2007. We went for a year. Intent, intent was a year. And we stayed for three. Yeah. Um, and while I was there, I was working. I was shooting um, I was shooting editorial projects from magazines from New York, a few projects like that. I was working for clients in Ireland. And I was working with fashion fashion designers in Ireland and working with- That worked out. Working with artists. Yeah. With musicians. And- um, so when I came back to the States, we moved to Denver for many reasons we came here. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do here because I was I felt like I was in a desert. I, did, I didn't know the market. It seemed small. Um, it didn't look like anything I had ever been into as far as my career goes. But I did have a, an entire portfolio of Irish golf imagery. And there was a golf magazine here that I went to initially. And that was the beginning of me getting, getting a foot in the door in Denver, mm. with working for them. Um, because I wasn't sure where I was going to work. Yeah. Um, so you, so, you, you went from Ireland to Denver? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
that was a big shift. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big shift. Having, having, li- having visited one and lived in the other, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, it was a big shift. Um, so that's pretty much my story. That's pretty <laughs> What a story it is. I absolutely love it. And you, you've you been so gracious with your time. I'm going to uh, roll out the red carpet for you. Uh, tell tell our audience what you got going on in your life. What I have what? What you have going on in your life. Anything you want to promote, anything you are excited about, whatever it is. Um, I could be going back to Ireland this year with a major travel, with a, with a private travel company to leave. Very cool. Um, lead a photo a photo expedition on the west of Ireland for their clients. Nothing has been formulated or yet, but it's in discussion right now. Um, I'm in a place where I'm looking for more time for myself than I'm still. I'm still. I'm still. I still have a fire to work, but I still want to. I'm in a place where I want to find more time to do the things I like doing. Also, Absolutely. you know. Um, but uh, that's a really hard transition. I don't know how people retire. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how Here's to. Here's the thing. Like when you, when you love what you do and you have a legitimate passion, like why, you know, retiring means you take on the projects that you want to take on and instead of that you have to take on, I feel like, right? Like you're never going to stop being creative, stop working in that way. But like, you know, there's a part of me that feels like I still haven't done it the best as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. The fire's still there. Yeah, I really do. There's something I feel like there's something that I still haven't done. Would you ask me to put a put a name on it? I can't, but I can tell you that there's that experience, that internal experience that I have that feels that way. I it's one of my um, my favorite Macklemore lines is uh, a true artist is never satisfied, and I guess that's the sacrifice. Like you are always chasing something. Yeah, and and that's part of the experience and part of the creation journey. And I think it's beautiful. You know, early on when, again, this is, I'm going back in time. Um, somebody, there's a couple of things I'd like to share before we're done here about that. No, hundred young. Give me all of it, please. Um, there was a time when it hit me one day that I was like, Oh my God, I'm actually getting to do what I want to do. And then it hit me. It's like, Oh, I wonder if I should be getting paid more for <laughs> because I was willing to do, I, I realized that it was my met, mentally, but just because I was getting to do it was enough. Right. But I had to really change that shift. That thing. No, no, I need to be paid as well. So live. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, and then early on, somebody pointed out to me that, um, and it was a model that I was working with in New York city who was very close to me, a friend. And we were talking about my work one day and I was in a place of frustration about not getting things I, that I wanted. And she said to me, she goes, you know, you're a really good photographer. She goes, but you're also an artist. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh yeah, I am. I mean, I never even looked at myself that way, but yeah. I, I, I think that leads everything I do. I, I mean, think- I feel like that's what's, what separates uh successful and memorable photographers and artists from just the picking up the paycheck. I think it's the vision, the experience, like you, you, your artistic expression is what makes you stand out. Uh, and that's super important. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, you know, I've been watching, uh, Bruce Springsteen's been in Dublin, in Ireland and you just, I think his tour is going through Ireland and I've been watching on social media for the last, last five or six days. And he keeps posting pictures of himself with like people in the street in Dublin. Yeah. And like of himself in the pubs. Have you seen this? Have you seen it? I haven't. I haven't. I'm going like, to check it out. It's like, did you, did you ever catch the thing that Mick Jagger did recently when they toured? I think, no. I think he inspired Bruce. Mick would have <laughs> pictures of himself like in really obvious places wherever he went. And it would always say, nobody recognized me. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, we had, we had one mission, well, two missions. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. The main mission when we went to Ireland was to find a local pub that we could go to every night and build relationships with, like have the Irish pub experience. And we did it and they literally 
Like this was, so we have two kids now. This was before we had any kids and they literally were like, Hey, you need to come back with your family. And that's a goal. I'm hoping enough of them will be alive to remember because there was a lot of, a lot of fairly old people there, but like we had so much fun at this Irish pie at the, at the, and by the way, best Guinness in Ireland. We went to the, we went to the Guinness brew, like the still brewery and the Guinness we had at that pub in in the Ring of Kerry in the south of Ireland was better than the Guinness Brewery. Uh, you went to St. James Gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We did the whole thing. And it was, I can't, I wish I remember the name of it, but it was, it was everything. You said you were in Kerry? Yeah. We were, yeah, we were in County Kerry. Um, it was, again, if you can, there's, I'm sure there's a bunch over there because, you know, they have billboards everywhere that says Guinness gives you strength. Oh, what, like, what village were you in? I wish I remembered. Oh, we could talk. I would have to ask my wife, and, and if she looks through photos, she could give us a name. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know afterwards. Yeah, yeah, let me know. But uh, no, it was it was literally like they taught us how to properly drink a Guinness. It's the coin. The coin test is yeah. when it, it the, the sound goes a little bit deeper because it's settled. Right. And, it com- completely ruined Guinness for me for in the states. Oh yeah, <laughs> except yeah. for the the extra stout, which is a little closer because it's a little stronger uh, yeah. to what it is in in Ireland. But like, yeah, did, it, you have, did you have Murphy's or Beamish? I'm not. I it was. I mean, mostly just Guinness. Yeah. 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 But you, but there's there's other brands that you, you know you can get Budweiser at a pub in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I've. But they mix it with our- yeah, Listen, listen. If I could, I wouldn't order it because I don't even drink Bud Budweiser Budweiser here. Yeah, they mix it with orange juice and they call it a sh- <laughs> shanty. I think that's yeah. yeah. standing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a breakfast drink. Now, come on, the, Irish, the Irish coffee. We I we did get the the cups for the Irish coffee with you know the the coffee plus cream plus Bailey's plus a little bit of Jameson. Best thing you'll ever have. Right. Oh my God. So good. <laughs> but man, it's been an absolute blast talking to you. And I am uh, I'm really enjoying fully, fully jealous of your time in Ireland. And <laughs> uh no, this is this has been great. I, I really appreciate it. And uh yeah, any 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 final words you want to uh give the audience? No. Um live your dream. Be honest to yourself. Honesty and chase the chase the passion. Can't agree more. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Thank uh, you, man. Somebody said this to me early on. I'll say this now. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was when I first went to New York, and I was talking about my dream of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do and all of my all of the things I was going to accomplish. And I can remember specific. I was in a dark room with a with a with a guy who was doing printing. Is the printing for another photographer, <clears throat> and I, he was he became a friend of mine, and we were just talking about the business. And I, like I said, I, I had all these aspirations. And he said to me, he said, the first step you take <clears throat> will determine the path you get on, that you end up on. He said, so really be conscious of the first step you take. And that stayed with me all this time. And um, now more than ever, I think about that because that first step led me here. But I had no idea what that meant at the time. Yeah. What that meant. So it's, I mean, it's, it essentially sounds like follow your gut. And yep. that's where you will continue to keep going in the right direction. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate the time and, uh, and hanging out and, uh, this has been a blast. Thanks. No, I'm going to go look at your first, your first podcast. Now I'm going to have dinner and um, look up Nigel. Yes. Let the <laughs> yeah, comment and, and, and embarrass him. It'll be great. <laughs> Conversations with creatives. That's all I got to do is search, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link. Please do. And if there's anything, you the things that you would like from me, do you want me to just send them to you? Yeah. No, send me all the links and I will, uh, I'll just, I'll put a whole, if people can check out everything in the, in the notes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll try to make sure I have, the, I think there's three or four things that we talked about. I'll make sure you get those. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. All right, Noah. Thanks, bud. Also, I'm sure I'll see you soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah.